okay perfect um yes so what are we going to do in today's class uh, so all the types of variances we are going to uh, cover all the concepts we are going to cover once the concepts are over we are going to uh, do three sums okay one is going to be a may 21 rtp sum the other one is going to be a past year question sum and one illustration so these are like three different variety of sums so all the three varieties we are going to do in the in today's class this case so now we are going to start with the concept of standard costing so before we dive into what are the variances what are the different types of variances how do we calculate that this session is being uh, recorded yes okay so before we uh, dive into that there are a few basic things that i would like to um, that i would like to you know make you understand okay so the first concept that we are going to start is what is the difference between budget standard and actual what are the differences between all the three terms okay so what is budget budget is a budget is a term which is used in relation to the past year data so depending on the past year data if you make a estimation on what in what terms the current year production or in what terms the current year prices or in what terms the current year uh, material must be used that will be called as a budget so depending on the past year data if you make a if you make estimation for current year that will be known as budget what is standard so in standard what will happen is they will also take into account the past year data to come to the current year figures but they will also use or keep in mind the current year situation so they will also add in that the current year situation which is there and then come up with again then come up for the current year data for example what happens is that uh what you did was that uh, you made a budget of 5 lakh rupees as a company's management you made a budget of 5 lakh rupees that in 5 lakh rupees our uh, production must be over but what happened was that the production department whichever was there what they did was they did the production or the actual production in 6.5 lakh okay so what happens is you go to the production manager you go to the production manager and ask him let's see uh, see sir we have given you a budget of only 5 lakh but you have did the current year production in 6.5 lakh why is there a variance in there why is there that you have you know uh, spent more okay so when you ask that the production manager will directly tell us that you know uh, you yourself company's management can themselves try to make this uh, production in uh, you know 5 lakh rupees it is never possible at all he'll say like that when we ask him why is he saying like that why is it not possible to do the production in 6.5 lakh then in such case he will tell you that see in this uh, you have made this budget depending on the past year data but in current year there has been a spike in prices of labor or spike in prices of materials consumed or the overheads so due to the inflation which is there normally the standard that should have actually been set was 5 lakh plus 1 lakh should only uh, should only have been your standard or only have been your budget in the right sense but this budget comparison which you have made in relation to the past year data is wrong so that's why there has been a uh, increase in the production uh, you know production what do we say production price or production cost okay so now if we ask him why there is a difference of 50000 because 6 lakh here we have made the here they have made the production in 6 lakh 50000 so now if we are going to ask them why you have made a production for 50000 rupees more or why has it cost you 50000 rupees more for this the production manager is going to be answerable but for this 1 lakh which has uh, come due to the rise in inflation or the cost which has increased due to the increase uh, uh, increase in the normal cost itself then in such case he will not be answerable for that so this is the difference between budget standard and actual budget is dependent on past year data whereas standard includes the past year data and the current year situation Whereas current year, I mean, actual only includes the current year situation. So this is the difference between all the three. Okay. So there is one more example that we are going to uh, take in uh, relation to uh, material. Okay. So material kgs. So in budget, what they told was that to prepare 100 units, to you have to make 100 units. And to make that 100 units, you have to consume 100 kg of raw material at 10 rupees each. 
what you did on actual basis was that you consumed 120 kg of raw material at 10 rupees each and made 150 units now if the company's management is going to go to the a production manager and ask him, see, we only told you to consume 100 kg of raw material, but you have consumed extra 120 kg of raw material. Why have you consumed extra? If you go and ask the production management, he'll tell us, please, sir, don't only see the consumed, uh, you know, consumption of raw material here. Also keep in mind how much we have produced as an output here. With 100 kg, only told us to produce 100 units, but using 120 kgs, we have produced 150 units. 120 kgs, we have produced 150 units. So here, to make a proper comparison, what the company's manage, management should do is do a standard or he must uh, do make a revised budget where he will do for 100 units, for making 100 units, if 100 kg is required, for making 150 units, how much kg is required? How much kg of raw material is required? 150 kg of raw material is required. So here, this actual is well within the standard only. Okay, so here, the production manager will not be questionable or will not be answerable also. So this is the difference between budget, actual, and standard. So standard usually is always prepared on what the actual output is. So depending on the actual output, they will make a standard uh, budget, okay, or standard data. Okay, fine. So this was the basic introduction on the differences of all the three. Now here, usually what can happen is that uh, we are going to first talk on the topic of profit variance. We are going to start talking on the topic of profit variance. So how can there be a difference in profit or how can there be a variance in profit is what you are going to understand. So first we are going to take the budgeted or standard data and next we are going to take the actual data. So when you take the budgeted and standard data, you made a sale. Okay, so here you write, I mean, in the budget, you would have written, no? Budgeted sale, what must have been there? Budgeted cost, what must have been incurred? And if you do budgeted sale minus budgeted cost, you will get a budgeted profit of 1 lakh rupees. So this is the budgeted data. But what happened in actual terms, you made an actual sale, then you made an actual cost, you incurred an actual cost. And when you did actual sale minus actual cost, you got an actual profit of 80,000 rupees. So here the budgeted profit was 1 lakh rupees, whereas your actual profit was only 80,000 rupees. So here the difference in this profit. So here the difference in this profit of 20,000 can be due to here what happened, our profit is less. So now when we uh, go and ask to the sales team, okay, why the profit is less here, then they will tell us that, see, the, sir, the profit variance is due to two reasons only. Okay, it is due to two reasons. He'll tell us either of two, re either of these two reasons only. One, he will tell us that the profit variance or the difference in profit is due to the cost. What might happen is, please make sure you mute yourself. Okay, fine. Yes. So he will tell us that the profit difference is only due to cost. Okay. One he can tell is due to cost. So he can tell us, uh, so what he can say is what budgeted cost you had uh, in comparison to that, the actual cost was actually higher. So due to increase in cost, the profit was low. Or else another reason that he may give us was due to sales. Okay. What happened rather than the, I mean, in the, uh, Comparison to the budgeted sale, our actual sale was actually less. So due to decrease in sales, our profit is also decreased. So here, please make sure you have uh, muted yourself, okay? I cannot repeat this again and again. Yes. So uh, due to this, there might have been a difference in profit. One was due to the cost and the other one is due to the sale. Now, when we are going to study standard costing, since we are going to only study the standard, uh, you know, I mean, costing subject, we are only going to focus on the concept, uh, only on the concept of due to cost. Due to cost, what have been the variance? Due to cost, what could have been the variance, okay? So here in cost also, we have three components. There is material, there is labor, and there is overheads. And overheads are again classified into two fixed overheads and variable overheads. So these are the components of cost. And due to all these costs only, there is a variance. Due to all these costs only, there is a variance. So now we are going to understand about each cost and what could have been the variance due to that okay 
So I hope until this, it is clear. Next, we are going to move on to the first topic, which is material variance. So when you talk about material variance, first they will ask you about material cost variance. So in material cost variance, they'll, they'll ask you that we had set a standard cost of, uh, we had told you only to, uh, you know, uh, standard cost, we had only asked you to do for 6 lakh rupees. But actual cost that you have incurred is 6.5 lakh rupees. Okay, so here due to this only, there is a cost variance. So how much is the cost variance here? 6 lakh minus 6 lakh, 50,000, 50,000 rupees. So here one another concept that you have to remember is that, this 50,000 which you get, you will do 6 lakh minus 6 lakh 50,000. So minus 50,000. So here the answer will come in negative. If the answer is going to come in negative, it means it is an adverse variance. That means standard cost what you had set was less, but the actual cost that you had spent was more. So this is a negative thing, negative thing to the organization, right? So 50,000 rupees, if it comes in uh, minus, you must not denote it as minus 50,000. Right? Rather, right, is a right there as 50,000. And in the bracket, you have to mention it is adverse. If it is with my minus sign, mention it as adverse. Or else, if what would have happened, the standard cost was 7 lakh rupees. But what you had actually spent was 6 lakh 50,000 rupees only. So here, 50,000 rupees you have spent. I mean, saved. So 7 lakh minus 6 lakh 50,000. So 50,000 rupees you have to write in the bracket as favorable. You have to write in as favorable. So this is the material cost variable. They had set a standard cost, but what you had spent is actual cost. The so standard cost minus actual cost you have to do and find out material cost variance. Next, what they may tell you to find out is material usage variance. Material usage variance. So in material usage variance, what they will tell you is we had told you to consume a standard quantity of raw material, but you had con consumed an actual quantity of raw material. Standard quantity of uh, standard quantity minus actual quantity you have to do. And, and whenever what will happen is whenever the company's management is going to question regarding the material usage variance, who will they question regarding in relation to this? Who will use the material? The production team or the production department is only going to use the material so here the production manager is only going to be the only going to be responsible so when you go and question the production manager you can only question him regarding the quantity that he has used not regarding the prices correct because his responsibility is only to consume the raw material or use the raw material and turn it into finished goods so when you are going to ask him you are going to ask him see sir we are told you to produce in standard quantity but you produced in, uh, but you produced, I mean, but you consumed according to actual quantity. So here, yeah, since you're not responsible uh, in relation to price, we will multiply it with standard rate. Since he is not responsible uh, for the price, we will multiply it with standard rate. The same when you see for material price variance, here for prices, who is responsible, who is going to buy the raw material, purchase department is going to buy the raw material. So the purchase manager is responsible for material price variance. So you will ask him, see sir, we had told you to, you know, buy according to standard prices, but you have bought according to the actual prices. And now this actual prices, whether you would have paid for the standard quantity or for the actual, con actual quantity that you had brought, you would have paid this actual prices for the actual quantity you have brought. So it is standard prices minus actual prices into, act, uh, into actual quantity. Okay. So voice is breaking. Someone has said, someone has said, no, I hope my voice is not breaking. Yes. Just check your connections one. Okay. Once. Okay. So this was standard cost variance. I mean, material cost variance, material usage variance and material price variance. Okay. Next, we are going to see, so what might happen is this, uh, these three things, they will only ask, these three things is what they will ask you usually when you have a single raw material as input. If you are only using one raw material as an input for making the output, they will ask you these three variants. But what might happen is sometimes you may use more than one raw material. That is a mix of raw material you can use. So here, when you may use a mix of raw material that is more than uh, one raw material to make the out to bring out the output, what can happen is that they may ask you uh, the cost variance, usage variance, and price variance. But apart from that, they may ask you two more variants, which is under the usage variance, 
they will ask you in relation to the yield variance and they will ask you mixed variance so now how to find out these both are what we are going to understand here okay so here what might happen is that uh, they uh, so here they have told you that we are going to one second yes so here they have given you a standard okay in the standard they have told you that there are two raw materials which are which you are going to use to bring out the output one is raw material a and the other is raw material b okay and you have to produce 100 units of output so to produce 100 units of output you are using two raw materials one is raw material a and the other is raw material b so you are going to use 100 kgs of raw material at a standard rate and 200 kgs of raw material at a standard rate so total raw material that you are going to use is 300 kgs that is inclusive of a and b 300 kgs you are going to use okay what how what actually you have uh, used what actually you have used here so raw material a raw material b so actual what you will produce is also 100 units only so re always remember whenever you produce you make a standard uh, you know standard you will always make it in relation to the actual units that have got produced only that is actual amount of output only you will uh, take a comparison to here 100 units uh, if it actual is 100 units then the standard uh, thing will also be in relation to 100 units only okay so remember that thing this will be helpful when you solve the sums okay so actual for 100 you making 100 units of output for a you used 160 kgs at actual rate and b you b you used 120 kgs at actual rate okay so totally you used 400 kgs of raw material at an actual okay so here what you have to do is you have to find something known as one second guys yes so here you have to find something known as revised actual quantity so how will you find out revised actual quantity is that uh, whatever the actual quantity total is that you will take and write it here so you will write 400 kgs if the actual quantity total was at the same actual quantity total you will first come and write here as 400 kgs then what you will do is this 400 kgs you will split it in the ratio of standard in the ratio of uh, standard okay so what is the standard ratio here a is 1 uh, a is 100 kg b is 200 kg so it is nothing but 100 is to 200 so it is 1 is to 2 so this 400 kg you will split up in the ratio of 1 is to 2 if you do so in the standard ratio if you split so you will get revised actual quantity as a 133 kg and b 267 kg and b 267 kg okay so this is what is revised actual quantity so here if you see here if you see what will happen is so if you compare the standard and the revised actual quantity here what is the difference here the difference is due to quantity only because the ratio here is the same only here also the ratio is 1 is to 2 for the raw material and here also the ratio is 1 is to 2 only okay but here the difference is due to the difference in quantity or kg so 300 here it is and here it is 400 kg the same way if you compare actual and uh, RAQ that is revised actual quantity. Here the difference is not due to quantity because here the quantity is same only four hundred and four hundred. But here the difference is due to the difference in mix because here the difference is due to the difference in mix. Here the mix of A B is one sixty kg is to two forty kg, which is two is to three. Here in revised actual quantity it is one is to two. Here the difference is due to mix. Okay, so here so what you will do is when they ask you in relation to material uh, material yield variance here what did we tell you here uh, here yield means refers to quantity so uh, when there was a difference in quantity when you compared the standard quantity and revised actual quantity there was a difference and you multiply you will multiply it with the standard price because here we are only concentrating on the quantity and price doesn't matter here the same way so you take a standard price the same way when you you know uh find out the material mix variance so in which there was a difference in mix when you compare the uh when you compare the revised actual quantity with the actual quantity so when you compare the revised actual quantity with the actual quantity there was a difference in the mix okay and here also since we are concentrating on uh, quantity you don't need to concentrate on prices you can directly do multiplied by standard prices okay so these were the material cost variances 
Okay, so I hope material cost variance is clear to you all. Is it clear? Okay, so until you answer me, I'll move on to the next variance, uh, which is labor variance. Okay, so labor variance, the labor variance, what we are going to do is yes. So in this also one one variance, we are going to understand. Yes, so in labor variance, what we are going to do is, lab, first you have to, they will tell you to find out labor cost variance. How do you find out uh, labor cost variance? Labor cost variance, as you all know, it is nothing but standard cost minus actual cost. So we had told you to, uh, you know, only spend a standard cost on labor, but you have actually spent an actual cost on labor. So the difference between that will be the labor cost variance. Okay. So I hope labor cost variance is clear. Next. Next, there are two things. One is labor efficiency variance and labor rate variance. So first, let's see labor efficiency variance. Unlike... Uh, unlike the material variance, here we will not uh, do the comparison of quantity. Here we will do the comparison of hours. Why are we going to compare, uh, do the comparison in hours? Because here the labors are work or the labors are going to paid, are going to be paid according to the hours they have worked only. Okay, or hours they have spent in making that output. So here we will take into consideration hours. So efficiency. So in efficiency, what uh, we are going to see is how productive the labor has, the, the labor were. Sorry. Yes. So how productive the labor were. So we will tell them, see the labor, we had told uh, them to work for standard hours, but they had worked for actual hours only. So this, there will be a difference in the efficiency. So here, sorry, it's not multiplication. Here it is minus. Okay. So we had told them to work for a standard hours to produce that amount of output, but they worked for this much of actual hours to produce that output. So this is uh, this will be the difference in the efficiency. Either they would have uh, produced it in less number of hours or more number of hours. Okay, that depends on them and their efficiency. Here, since we are not concerned about the prices because we are concerned about only the efficiency here, we'll multiply it with the standard rate. Okay, next Next, when you see the labor rate variance, so on what rate you are going to pay to the variance is what we are going to see here. So we are told you to pay the labor at a, we are told you to pay at a standard rate. But what you have paid is at a actual rate. And this actual rate paid, well, you would have paid it for the standard hours they would have worked or you would have paid it for the actual hours they would have worked. You would have paid this actual rate for the actual hours they would have uh, worked. So into actual hours. So this is standard rate minus actual rate into actual hours. So this is labor rate variance. So here in this labor uh, here, you have one more concept known as the idle time. So we are going to understand the idle time concept now. So here what might have happened is that uh, you would have told them that the labor should work for 1000 standard hours. So standard hours they must work is for 1000 hours. But the actual hours they would have worked is for 1300 hours. So the actual hours they would have worked would have been for 1300 hours. So here what will happen is the company's management will go and will go and question whom. For the, uh, for the actual hours they have worked, whom is their question? They will go and question this production department because uh, on production departments and instructions only the labor would have worked. So here the production manager is only responsible. Okay. So they will go to the production manager and ask them, see, we are told the laborers to work for 1,000 hours, but they have worked for 1,300 hours. Why is there a variance of 300 hours extra? You are answerable. So what the production management will directly tell you, no? see, listen, what happened was that in this 1,300 hours, actually the time that the labor took to produce the output was only 1,200 hours, efficiently or effectively. The labor only took 1,200 hours to produce the output. But here there was 100 hours in which there was machine failure or there was power failure. There was either machine failure or there was power failure. So the production manager will tell him, see, sir, I am not responsible for the, I am not responsible for the 100 hours that has uh, lost, uh, that the labors were not uh, working. Uh, because it was uh, due to the production failure or mission failure. This I am not responsible. I am only responsible for the productive hours, whether they are worked or not. So here it will be 1,200 hours. So here I will be responsible only for 1,200 hours. So here we will consider this 1,200 hours as the actual working hours of the 
actual working hours of the uh, labor. So here, when you are going to do the efficiency uh, variance also, you know, when you do standard hours, you will do standard hours minus not only actual hours, but specifically actual workable hours or actual worked hours you will reduce to find out the efficiency and multiply it with the standard rate. Okay. Then what might happen is, uh, then in such case here, what will happen is that here, if this is standard working hours, when you are going to pay to the labor, are you going to pay to the labor for the 1200 hours or for the 1300 hours? You will pay to the labor for the number of hours they were there in the factory. In the factory, they were there for 1300 hours. It is not the mistake of the labor that the machine got failed or the power cut got out. They were there in the factory for 1300 hours. So they must also be paid for 1300 hours only. So here, like 1300 hours will be the actual payable hours. So here what will happen is when you find out the labor rate variance, here the actual rate when you take, I mean, actual rate you will take, sorry, not actual rate. Here I've done a mistake. Okay, here. When, okay, here I'll, I'll tell you. So here when you multiply it with the actual hours, you are not going to pay the actual rate according to the actual workable hours. You are going to pay them in relation to the actual payable hours only. So in, for 1300 hours, you are going to pay them. So here you will do multiplied by actual payable hours only. Okay, thank you. So now uh, you would have, you have understood what is uh, labor efficiency variance and what is labor rate variance. So here I also told you something about the idle time. Idle time means the time in which the labor would not have worked. That 100 hours due to the machine or the power failure, the labor would have not worked. So this idle time variance also they will tell you to find out in the question. Okay, so if you tell if they tell you to find out idle time variance. Here, idle time variance, how will you find out? You will do idle time into the standard rate. You will do idle time into the standard rate. Okay. So, how do you find out idle time? So, idle time is usually a negative uh, negative variance. Okay. That it is an adverse variance. So, the answer here must always come in minus only. Okay. So, idle variance, how will you find out actual workable hours? What was there? What was actual workable hours? 1200 hours. Minus actual payable hours was 1300 hours into the standard rate. Into the standard rate, if you do, you will find out your idle time variance. So actual workable hours minus actual payable hours into standard rate. So this was your idle time variance. Okay. So this was in relation when there was a single labor input. Okay. There was only one labor uh, working to produce the output. But now in case if in the question the same way more than one labor was working or a mix of laborers were working to produce it out, produce out, uh, output, then in such case I can ask you two extra things that is labor mix variance and labor productivity variance in relation to the labor efficiency variance. So under labor efficiency variance only we have two more categories. One is labor mix variance and labor productivity variance. Here this labor mix variance and labor productivity variance is just the same as the material thing that we saw here if you now take out the kgs and substitute it with hours take out the kgs and put hours kg kg hours hours and here also if you remove the kg and put hours this uh, this is the same format that you have to use to find out the mix and uh, you know productivity so here instead of quantity we will say the difference in productivity here we'll say the difference in productivity so this is going to be the difference the same only you are going to use so now you also know how to find out the revised actual hours also. I hope there's no confusion in that. So for productivity, what you will do is standard hours, standard hours minus revised actual hours into standard rate. And for mix, it will be revised actual hours minus actual hours into standard rate. So if you do, you will be able to find out your labor mix variance and labor productivity variance also. Okay. So I hope the labor variance is clear. If you are clear, just let me know in the comment box below. I mean, comment section there. And uh, we'll move on to the next topic. Next topic is variable overhead variance. Variable overhead variance. So until now, you have seen uh, labor, uh, uh, I mean, material variance and labor variance. Now we are going to move on to overheads. So in overheads, the first variance that we are going to understand is variable overhead cost variance. So in variable overhead cost variance, this when you find out this labor or I mean not labor, variable overhead cost variance, you know, it is going to be the same as your labor variance only. 
the same formulas as your labor variance what you did only okay so in uh, what you can do is when you are finding out so usually the cost variance you know what is going to be the variable overhead cost variance it is nothing going to be standard cost minus actual cost so if you do this you will find out your cost variance okay next they will tell you to find out uh, variable overhead efficiency variance so labor efficiency variance how did you find out standard hours that you that the worker should have actually worked minus the actual hours they have worked into here the efficiency only is dependent only on the hours they have worked and not on the prices so you will do multiply it by standard rate so if you do you will find out your variance so that is your variable overhead efficiency variable also now if they tell you to find out variable overhead expenditure or spending variance here you will take the help of rate so standard rate is what we have told you to pay them but you have paid according to the actual rate for the actual rate for what has you would have paid you would have not paid it for the standard has you would have paid it for the actual has they have worked so it is standard rate minus actual rate into actual has so that will be also your variable overhead expenditure or spending variance so this is how you find out your variable cost variable spending and variable efficiency variance i hope it is clear here here usually there is no concept of idle time here usually there is no concept of idle time why is there no concept of idle time like labor because here whenever the machine or power failure happens suppose the machine or power failure happens for 100 hours here what would have happened was that here uh, here the labor in such case would have uh, not worked for 100 hours but the wages for such 100 hours should have been paid to them so here the, due to this only we are calculating a variance here due to this only we are calculating a variance here but here in case of overhead if the machine or power has got failed then there we would have not incurred any kind of expense we would have not incurred any kinds of overheads there would have been no electricity overheads or any overheads that you can name no expenditure would have been incurred so logically thinking there should have been no idle time concept here because there is no cost incurred due to which no variance can happen here so here this is the reason why no idle concept or no idle time variance is here but in case what our institute will do is they will still give you a question stating the idle time so if question specifically states in relation to the idle time if the question specifically states in relation to the idle time then you have to find out idle time variance income so is the same as labor only so what will happen you will have expenditure variance idle time variance and efficiency variance so efficiency will be standard hours minus actual working hours actual working hours into standard rate so this actual payable hours actual working hours this concept will only come when there is idle time okay then what will be this expenditure it will be standard rate minus actual rate into actual payable hours what will be the idle time it is actual working hours minus actual payable hours into standard rate so this was the concept in relation to variable overhead cost or variable overhead variance now next we are going to understand fixed overhead variance next concept that we are going to understand is the fixed overhead variance okay so fixed overhead variance to find out fixed overhead variance you have to do this grid you have to make this grid okay when you are making this grid what you have to uh, do is yes so when you are making this grid you have to write here budgeted hours budgeted rate and if you multiply budgeted hours and budgeted rate you will get your budgeted fixed overhead or the budgeted cost then you will write your actual hours and your actual fixed overhead finally you will write standard hours into the budgeted rate so here in standard hours separately you don't have any standard rate the same budgeted rate will only come here so standard hours into budgeted rate if you do you will get your absorbed fixed overheads so this is a grid that you have to prepare what is the first thing that you have to do budgeted hours into budgeted rate will give you budgeted fixed overhead then actual hours and actual fixed overhead you have to write and finally standard hours you have to write and multiply it with the budgeted rate and you will get your absorbed fixed overhead so like this the same way in the exam also you have to prepare this grid and substitute all of these components here okay so now let's understand uh, the fixed overhead cost variance and now you will also understand why i told you to prepare that grid okay so here when you are just give me a minute guys
Okay. So here, what will happen is when you are uh, preparing the fixed overhead cost, when finding out the fixed overhead cost variance, it will be nothing but your standard cost minus actual cost. So how do you find out standard cost and actual cost? Until now, I have been telling you. So how do you find out your standard cost? Your standard cost is nothing but the standard hours you have worked. And for the standard hours, how much rate you have paid. So that will be your standard cost. What will be your actual cost? Your actual cost will be nothing but the actual hours that you have worked. Multiply it with the actual rate per hour. So if you do so, you will get your actual cost. So that is how you find out your standard cost and actual cost. Okay. The same way when you are finding out for material or uh, in relation to quantity, you will do standard quantity into standard rate and you will get your standard cost. And you will do actual quantity into actual rate and you will get your actual cost. So this will be only applicable. Quantity will only be applicable in relation to your material variance. For all other variants, we will do it depending on the hours only. Okay. So standard hours into standard rate will give you standard cost. And actual hours into actual rate will give you actual cost. So for cost, you will do standard cost minus actual cost and find out your cost variance next to what you will do is you will come back to the grid and in when you come back to the grid what you will do is here i made some arrow marks if you can see here i made some arrow marks if you can see so this is nothing but a shortcut on how you are going to find out your variances okay so here what you will do is you will do act you will do observed fixed overhead Two from here, you will take a arrow. From here, you will make a arrow to budgeted fixed overheads. So if you do observed fixed overheads, and if you compare observed fixed overheads and uh, budgeted fixed overheads, you will get your volume variance. Sorry, ma'am, is observed another name of standard. Yes. So you won't say here standard fixed overheads. You will either call it as recovered fixed overhead or observed fixed overhead only in this overhead uh, chapter. Yes, it is an another name for standard fixed overheads. You are right. Okay. Yes, because fixed overheads usually cannot be standard. Okay, so fixed overhead standard, you must budget it is different. Uh, standard is different here. You will not do like that. So here, rather than telling it as standard fixed overhead, we either call it as observed fixed overhead or recovered fixed overhead. That is, from the budgeted fixed overhead, how much have you observed or how much have you recovered? Okay, so not go to that concept now. Maybe you will get confused with that. Okay, I will tell you that in the last... Yes. So what was I explaining you? You will compare the, uh, so when you compare the fig, observed fixed overhead and uh, budgeted fixed overhead, uh, you will get your volume variance. Okay. Next, what you will do is you will compare your budgeted fixed overheads and the arrow goes down with your actual fixed overhead. Then in such case, you will get your expenditure, expenditure variance once again. Yes, I'm sorry for the disturbance. Uh, you will get your expenditure uh, variance. Next, you will come to this side of the grid. Here, if you compare the standard hours with the actual hours, see the arrow goes up. So if you compare the standard hours with actual hours, you will get your efficiency variance. In the same way, if you are going to compare your actual hours, as the arrow goes up with the budgeted hours, you will get your capacity variance. So I'll just repeat with all the arrows again. Arrows, whenever you remember, you have to just prepare this grid, substitute all these components from the question, and then you have to do this arrow marks. How will the arrow marks go? The arrow marks will go up, down, up, up. So always remember this, up, down, up, up. Okay. So now here, now let's start seeing the each variance one. So first, let's start with the volume variance. So, so I hope this is visible. Yes. So first, we'll start with volume variance. So when you uh, see the volume variance, what did I tell you to compare? Absorbed fixed overheads with the budgeted fixed overheads. So it's from down to up. So it is nothing but absorbed fixed overheads minus budgeted fixed overheads. If you do, you will get your volume variance. Next Next is expenditure variance. Next is expenditure variance. So for expenditure variance, what I told you to compare the budgeted overheads with a down arrow to actual overheads. So it is nothing but budgeted fixed overheads minus actual fixed overheads. So if you do this, you will find out your expenditure variance. Okay. Next variance, I may tell you to find out this efficiency variance. So efficiency variance, how will you uh, find out Efficiency variance, wait, I'll zoom in. Yes, efficiency variance, how are you going to find out? So for efficiency, what did I tell you? You have to compare the standard hours and actual hours. So arrow is going up. 
So it is nothing but standard hours minus actual hours. So here the efficiency is not related to prices. It is related to hours. So you multiply it with the standard rate. Next, here you won't multiply it with rate for volume and expenditure. For these variances only, you will multiply it with the rate. Okay. Yes. Next. Next, they will tell you to find out capacity variance. So for capacity variance, what you will do here, you have to go from actual hours to budgeted hours. Actual hours to budgeted hours. So you will do actual hours minus budgeted hours and you will multiply it with the standard rate. So that is capacity variance. Okay. So these were the four different types of variances. And finally, they may also tell you to find out something known as a calendar variance. Some they will tell you to find out a, a calendar variance. So how will you find out the calendar variance is in the question, they'll give you the actual number of days uh, that the labor has worked minus the budgeted working days they should have worked. If you do this, you will get a number of days and you have to multiply it with the standard rate per day. You have to multiply it with the standard rate, standard fixed over rate or standard rate per day. If you do so, you will be able to find out your calendar variance. You are going to see a sum in relation to this. So you'll understand this calendar variance better. So these were all your fixed uh, cost variance also. So I hope uh, this is clear to you. Any doubts in any of the variances? Is all the variances clear? I'll be solving three sums. So you don't need to worry. So are, are the variances clear? Material, so we saw four variances, material, labor, uh, variable, uh, variable and fixed overhead. Okay. So yes, guys, that's it for the video. I uh, hope you found this video helpful. So we have covered all the concepts in this video. And in the next video, we are going to cover all the sums or three sums, I can say, which are of different varieties. So that is also a must watch video. I'll link the part two in the description box below. And also the notes for the standard costing are also available in the description box. So you can check out that. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like, share and also subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. Thank you.